Hi there, this is George Crudo for the Brian Peterson School of Photography, and today we are doing image critiques. We have five, five really nice images here to critique today, and let's get started. The first one is called Chase, and it's submitted by Paula Brady. And Paula tells us that Chase is under the gray Montana sky. He didn't know how to sit on command. We well, finally got him to sit for a bit. ISO 123 millimeters, one eighth of a second. I think the photo is lacking the wow fact. I like the composition, but it's lacking in color brightness, etc. Use a Canon Mark D2, 16 to 35 Canon lens. I think I should have used a higher shutter speed as well. All right, Paula. Well, let's take a look at this. And first thing I look at is I. This is just a magnificent looking dog. Chase is just beautiful. Um, captured a great expression on his face. He's very attentive. I like the catch light in his eyes. And his his coat just looks looks beautiful. But um, my first impression was why uh, you thought you should have used a sh higher shutter speed. I don't really notice any motion blur in this image, and I know it's a, a lower resolution file, so perhaps you um, you can see a little more motion blur in certain areas that I don't see here. Probably the original file you probably picked it up. So in, if that was the case, yes. Um, you would have benefited from having a higher shutter speed. Okay, regarding you know, lacking color in this image, it's it's a gray, dreary day. I shoot a lot of architectural and uh, real estate photography as well. And uh, these days can be a bit of a challenge. Um, one good thing about these type of days, though, is you're not dealing with the harsh shadows that, that um, you get with bright, sun, sunny days as well. So you can take advantage of, of that. Uh, one way you can kind of enhance the colors, and one way that I like to do it is I like to use the Select uh, Color Range tool. And what I'm going to do with this image here is I'm going to go into the greens in the grass, and I'm using the eyedropper from this Color Range tool. And I'm just going to go around. I'm going to hold my Shift key down, which is going to allow me to add several sections into my selection. And I'm going to go around. I'm going to select all the greens that I want to bring out more color in. And I think that should do it. And I'm going to click OK. And we're going to do a little bit of a feather on this. So we do Shift F6. And being it's a small file, we only need to feather this maybe about five pixels. That should be enough. Higher resolution files, you'll probably have to raise that up a little bit. So let's collect, uh, cur let's grab a curves adjustment layer here and just bring this down a little bit. And what this is doing is this is reducing the luminance, which actually makes it look more colorful. Instead of using the saturation tool, um, you use this to bring out more color. Now next, what I would do is I would grab that color range tool again, and now I'm going to collect, uh, select chase, certain areas within his coat here. Let's do that again. There we go. Now let's feather this again, five pixels, and do a curves adjustment layer. Yeah, you can see a little more, a little color enhancement in Chase. And one more time, we're going to select color range. I'm going to select certain areas of the sky because it is a kind of dull, flat looking sky. So maybe to bring a little more detail into the sky, we can do this. Oops, let's get rid of that. That was a little too much. I just did a control Z stop that one and now we're going to do shift f6 again leave it at five and the curves adjustment layer and just bring it down a little bit which brings a little more detail into the sky now looking at my histogram i see i could probably use a little bit of a levels adjustment so let's just bring this slider the white slider over a little bit just to bring a little more in there okay the next thing i noticed in this image was the um depth of field, uh, I would have selected a more, sh a little more shallow depth of field, although this is a little out of focus. I think to bring a little more attention to our pal Chase here, 
we um, could benefit from having a little more sh uh, shallow depth of field. Now to simulate this, I'm just what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a background copy, a uh, copy of our background rather, and then I'm going to use my quick selection tool to select Chase, and I'm going to go all around Chase. And we get rid of that. Make sure I get them all. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Shift Control I. And what that does is selects the inverse of Chase, which is what I want to do. And we are going to add a Gaussian blur to that. Okay, now we do Control D. And then we add a layer mask. Now what we want to do here is we want to grab a black brush and we want to brush out all this area in the foreground because we really don't want this blurry either because this is the same distance from the camera as Chase and that has to be in focus if he's in focus. Okay. And then we can just change the opacity on this a little bit to make it look more natural. Okay. And there we have it. this before and that's after. So as you can see, I think it makes Chase a little more, um, makes him stand out a little bit more in this image. Let's just add a little vibrance layer to this and kick that up a little bit. So now we went from that to that, which looks nice. Chase is really looking pretty cool. He's a good looking dog. Um, the next thing I would do is take this area here really does not do much for this image. I think this showing this in the background is more than sufficient. And I think if we just brought this over just a bit and then this one over a little bit. And one final thing I would add is a nice vignette to this. And the way I do that is I create a curves adjustment layer. I bring my blacks slider all the way down and then select the marquee tool. The marquee tool is feathered at about 50 pixels on a larger resolution file. You'd have to probably use maybe up to 250 pixels. But ultimately what you want is you want to see some rounded edges here. You don't want to see a total square. You want to see it feathered a little bit like this. And then what I'm going to do is go shift backspace making sure that my foreground color is black. So shift backspace and then enter and control D to deselect and then we'll take that slider and just bring it up a little bit so it's not so dark and there is our final image and I think that that looks a little bit better I think it looks a little more professional not as much like a snapshot and um, possibly maybe one day see it on our calendar one day but this was a great shot Thank you, Paula, for submitting this image. I really enjoyed this, and he is a beautiful dog. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, we move on to our next image, which is called Bo Peep's Sheep. And this was submitted by Marjorie Diamond. And Marjorie tells us a sheep and goat farm outside Hendersonsville, North Carolina. Caught my eye as I drove down a back road. Okay, this is a rather small file here. Uh, if we look at the image size, it's, it's only about 640 pixels wide. We probably could have went at least double the size of that. And as a result, when I zoom in, I really cannot tell what the clarity of this image is. And I'm kind of losing a lot of, uh, a lot of detail in here that I probably would have seen on a larger uh, file. But in any case, let's, let's look at it anyway. And um, very good uh, capture, Paula. This was this is one of those things where you're riding along the road and you see something and you, something catches your eye. And I do this all the time, and, and you just want to get out and take this picture. And I like the fact that you noticed this. This is this is you got some great old weathered wood here. I like the fact that there's two different colors here, and it's kind of worn. 
and the expressions on on the animal faces are precious. Uh, just just checking out everything like three little nosy guys popping their head out to see what's going on. Um, just a, a very nice capture. Um, I don't know what I would do to improve it. The only thing I could see is that you do have some clipping here in your black. So in here, it's it's totally black. Uh, you might be able to take the raw file and open up the shadows a little bit to bring a little more detail in here. It's uh, and if not, it's it's actually okay too. I think it's not it's not terrible. I don't know how the border works for this image. I'm I'm not really a big fan of borders. Uh, only in certain instances, but I'd like to see what it would look like without a border. Um, the other thing I would do is maybe just crop a little bit off the left here, just around there, because I don't think we need all of that. And maybe the other thing that would have worked a little bit was if um, the, more, the sheep weren't so close to the bottom edge of this image. It's like really touching the bottom here, especially you have the border here, but it's it's really at the bottom edge. I would have liked to have seen a little more in the foreground here if that would have been possible. Uh, you could also try kicking up the vibrance a little bit because you got those red colors and the yellow just really nice. And by just kicking up that vibrance a little bit really makes it pop a little bit more. And um, see, you got some clipping here. I'm not sure if that's coming from the face of the sheep here, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. But if you do want to try and reduce your highlights a little bit, you can go to your channels. And what I'm going to do is hold down my control key while I click the RGB channel. And that's going to select all your highlights. I'm going to do a shift F6, a little bit of a radius of five pixels, and then just reduce that a little bit. And that'll reduce your highlights a little bit, but it still didn't get rid of it. So I'm not really quite sure where that's coming from. But that's something you could try uh, to do in RAW. You can actually try and reduce your highlights in RAW to, to eliminate some of that clipping as well. But other than that, this is, this is a pretty cool image. I would have just left a little more in the front here in the foreground. Um, but this was um, very interesting. I liked it. Thanks, Marjorie. Okay, our next image is called Wine Ad, and this was submitted by Mike FM1. And Mike tells us this was an attempt to create an image that could be reproduced for a magazine ad. I left space for text placement. Okay, Mike, good thinking, leaving space for copy. I like that. I do a lot of food photography, and that does come across my mind a lot while I'm doing that, because you never know where these images are going to be used. With that said, let's see. This this is a very clear, very good focused image. I like this the aperture use. This was a, a very good aperture with the background out of focus, with all the focus. You can still get a good feeling, good mood with the fire in the background, but yet your subject is, is very sharp and clear. The one thing that popped out at me, though, immediately was the reflection in the bottle. You could see your room in the in the background here. Uh, you could see a window and pro possibly even you shooting the picture here, uh, which you don't really want to see in commercial images like this. So what you would want to do is eliminate that light. You'd probably, probably, probably want to shoot in a different room where you don't have this light reflecting off the bottle and have a couple of strobes with soft boxes on the sides. And one little trick I like to use with uh, my soft boxes is I like to use either scrim or some kind of tracing paper in front of my soft box, which will actually soften the, the edge, the lighting edge of this bottle. And it'll accentuate it. If you just use the soft box alone, you'll have a harder edge light on, on the bottle. But with the two uh, different diffusers on it, it will really soften it nice. And what you want to do is you want that light to accentuate the edges of the bottle to really make it stand out. And that way you would eliminate all of this and that bottle would really pop a lot more. I think the black and white on this really works well. I like this, I like this a lot. One other um, 
suggestion I would make is if you look at the crop on this, this table is, is almost dead center. I think I would just kind of move this over just a little bit to put it off center and maybe bring this up a little bit. And that way you still have a little room for copy. And I think this just adds a little more interest to the image. But this, this was a really nice image. This is very well done. Uh, thanks, Mike. This was, this was fun. All right, move on to the next one. The next one is called Orbit. And this was submitted by Robert J. Engel. And Robert tells us this image was taken at Port Angeles, Washington Boatyard. The orbit was scheduled for demoli demolition within the next week. The image was captured with a 5D Mark III using a Canon 16 to 35, uh, an F22 150th of a second ISO 100. Okay, what a great subject this is. This is just, I would have loved to have shot this. This is nice. I My immediate reaction was I would have liked to seen this in color. I, I'm wondering if there was any color to this boat, um, if the sky was had any blue in it and I just wondered if it was if it would have looked better in color this looks like it was a uh, filter was used on this um, you have to be careful sometimes with overdoing filters they can be your best friend or they can be your worst enemy sometimes sometimes a filter overdone really does not do an image justice and in this image I could see some ghosting around uh, certain areas like um, like right around this mast here, uh, over here, you could see some, and I don't. I think it kind of takes away from the image a little bit. Uh, in here, also, it's it's a little bit, a little bit dark, and I'm sure there's so much detail in there, and it it just kind of looks, it almost looks like a, a charcoal sketch. This image in certain parts, but. Um, and I also would have left a little more space around the subject here. It's a little too close to the edges. Just give it a little more room to breathe, and I think it, it would have improved it. But I would try to reprocess this again, um, Robert. I would try to reprocess this again and, and maybe just lighten up on the, the filter a little bit and, and see how that works for you. But this, this was a, a nice subject. I mean, great subject i would have loved to shoot this as i said and um i'm sure at this point in time it's it's already been demolished and that doesn't exist anymore but it's just kind of sad but uh, anyway great image robert thanks for submitting and we are going to move into our last image for the day and the last one is called murphy another dog another and another golden retriever i love them my favorite dogs are goldens and labradors i love the retrievers <coughs> In any case, this image was submitted by Judith Eber Eberhardt. Judith Eberhardt. And Judith tells us, My adorable dog, Murphy, loved to chase a stick in the ocean and surf back to the shore. Didn't matter how far out the stick was thrown, he went for it with gusto. Sometimes his athleticism would even draw on lookers. This is my favorite memory of him. And this is certainly a wonderful memory. And... What a what a fun picture this is, and I love it. And looking at your choice of um, shutter speed works very well with this, because you captured him in total stop motion. The uh, waves, the water is just perfectly in focus here, from what I can see, and uh, everything looks great. And I love the expression on his face, that intensity, and he's just having a blast. So um, this is this is a great capture. Uh, okay, how can this be improved? Well, well, I think one of the things, and and it probably could not have been avoided. I don't know if it could have been avoided, maybe in a, at a different moment taken. But this up here kind of just takes away because it's, it's it's very bright up here. Although it's not clipping, it looks it looks fine, but it just. Um, kind of draws your eye up here and, and away from the subject. Uh, you could try reducing the highlights on this a little bit in raw or camera raw or uh, Lightroom. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to reduce the highlights that much in here, but one way to do it while in Photoshop is like I did with the previous image. 
one of the previous images is to control click RGB channel and then we're going to shift F6 feather about five pixels on this resolution file and then we are going to drop down the curves layer a little bit. Now by doing that I selected some of this part too which I really want to do so I'm just going to grab a uh, brush here and we're going to eliminate all of this. We don't want to select. We don't want to darken this at all. But that's about that's about as much as I can do here and you probably have much more leeway with it with a raw file in uh, Lightroom or Camera Raw. So I would just try to reduce those highlights just a little bit. Next thing I would do is this water has a nice color to it and I would bring a little more back into it with some vibrance. And then finally, we have a lot of space here which really does not, in my opinion, add a lot to the image. I don't think we need it. I would just crop a little bit off of that and then a little bit off of this and creating somewhat of a vertical here. And I think that works a little better, in my opinion. And um, this was a great image, and I don't think there's anything I can do. Maybe just uh, let's try adding a little bit of adjustment on our levels here. That just adds a little more contrast to the image and gives a little more punch. And I think it's a great image. It was a great capture. Good job, Judith. And um, I enjoyed looking at this one. And uh, I hope uh, Murphy is having a lot of fun this summer. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone, for submitting your images. And um, we'll see you again real soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.